Oscar Romeo 4, ISS. How do you copy? Sierra X-ray 7, India Sierra Sierra. This is Oscar Romeo 4, ISS. How do you copy? And actually, everybody has access to everywhere. This is an international space station. We're all partners, and we all work in all of the different modules. Over. So, Vasilius, I decided I wanted to explore and learn about new things, and of course, looking at the Earth from space was a, was a big motivator. Over. Oh, certainly we're, of course, sort of on the edge of technology up here, and we're creating new equipment to do new things, and so technical problems are the norm rather than the exception, but that's part of the learning process and understanding how to get human beings further out into our solar system. Over. Well, currently we have a crew of three. This summer we're going to have a crew of six, and uh, normal stay is around six months. I'll be here for about four months. Over. And focus, unfortunately, probably not in the next five to ten years, although you will see people going to the moon in that time frame. I think Mars is probably about 20 years away, and that's something that uh, you certainly will be able to work on. Over. Well, we certainly have a lot of important science experiments, but the main focus of our mission has been outfitting the station with hardware that will support six people when we get here, like new sleeping stations, new exercise equipment, a new toilet, new water regeneration system, things like that. Over. And we trained for three to four years to prepare for a mission here on the space station, so it takes quite a while. Over. Yeah, I think it will. It's a very special place up here, and it's also very special to look down and see our planet, not as individual people or individual countries, but as a system. It's our spaceship. It's our spacecraft, and we have to take care of it. Over. And Marina, it is, uh, it is capable of being unmanned if we have to leave in case of an emergency, whether that's a, a fire or a depressurization or someone's sick. We can put it in a conservation state, and it can sit here and wait for people to come back. Over. Nicholas, that was a very difficult question for me because I really enjoy it up here and it's a very unique experience, but at the same time I miss my friends and family. So I think if I could bring all my friends and family and some of the nice things from the ground with me and, and bring them with me and live up here, it might be kind of fun. Over. We do have some spare time in the evenings when we're relaxing after work and on the weekends, and I take a lot of pictures of the Earth. And, and then I email those to friends and things like that. I also work on uh, cooking when I have time. I like to cook, so I've been doing some cooking experiments. Over. Well, Vasilis, it only takes about eight and a half minutes to get into our first low Earth orbit, which is about 100 miles lower than where the station is. And if you fly up in a Russian Soyuz, you take about a day and a half to rendezvous with the station. And if you fly up in a U.S. shuttle, you take about two and a half days to rendezvous. And it has to do with changing orbits and altitudes and things like that. Over. Well, we get up in the morning at about 6 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time, and we have breakfast and get ready for work just like you would on the Earth. And then the, the ground and the Ocean Control Centers all over the world create a plan for us to work on that day. We exercise two and a half hours every day. We have a break for lunch and, a, of course, a break for dinner. Today I'm working on the oxygen system, and Mike is doing some science experiments, and Yuri's doing some medical experiments. Over. Yeah, we usually have some in the morning. You know, it's sort of leisurely, uh, just like you get up for school and, and do breakfast and have some time to kind of get ready. We have that time in the evening. It's the same thing. We have dinner. We have some time to wind down and relax. And, of course, on the weekends, we have all day on Sunday. And usually we work on Saturday, but we have partially Sunday, or Saturdays as well. Over. And Petros, we do. Every week we get a video conference with our families. We have email that we get synchronized with the ground three times a day. And also we have something that's kind of like an Internet telephone or a satellite telephone. So when we have the proper communication signal, we can actually phone call our families. And that's very, very nice. Over. And hello again, Demetra. Uh, we keep it probably comfortable, I don't know, 20... 20 to 22 degrees Celsius, and uh, the pressure at sea level inside the station. Now, outside, of course, in the vacuum of space, when you're in the sun, it can be very, very hot, and when you're in the night side of the Earth, it can be very, very cold. It swings by four or 500 degrees, so you don't want to be outside unprotected, and it's a vacuum, so you can't be outside unprotected as well. Over. Well, certainly there's a risk of accidents happening, of course, not only here in space, but also on Earth. But we train very, very extensively for those kinds of accidents and, and specific kinds of emergencies so that if that would happen, we could react automatically to be safe. Over. And it's a very good question because it turns out that our bodies uh, are absorbing nutrients slightly differently up here, and there's a medical experiment studying that. And they're very careful to design our menu that has all of the appropriate nutrients in it. We have food from the U.S., Russia, and Japan. Some of it comes dehydrated, and we have to add water, and some of it comes pre-prepared in cans and pouches, and we just have to heat it up. We eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I tend to eat smaller meals and snack a little more because I find that I can't eat as much at one sitting. Over. Alexandra, we get 
electricity from our solar arrays. We have a bunch of solar arrays, both on the Russian segment and the U.S. segment, and they provide all of our electricity. Over. And, Sophia, I, I cannot uh, ever get tired of looking at our beautiful planet. There's so many colors and textures and patterns going over the oceans and seeing where there's depth changes because of coral reefs or mountains. You have the deep, dark blues of the deep oceans, and that, and that changes to the very light blues and blue-greens of the shallow waters, and it's just so beautiful. And even flying over a place like the Sahara Desert that you would think would be very desolate and not so interesting turns out to be very interesting because you can see the lines of the sand dunes and you can see the dry riverbeds and you can see the texture of the rocky outcroppings in the middle of the desert. It's just so beautiful. Over.